The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. I'm your host, Yue Shu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. You'll also hear from my co-host and producer, Julie Kraftchik, as we explore this crazy dateable world. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Dateable, a show all about modern dating. There has been so much talk around a show on Netflix for the last few months, and it's called Love is Blind. (laughs) And Julie, I think you are the one that turned me on to the show at first, but it's quite an interesting dating experiment. Oh my God, yes. And I'm not actually a reality TV person, which is surprising (laughs) because you're like the Bachelor Nation type of the two of us. Yeah, And you always laugh at me whenever I talk about The Bachelor. Exactly. But I was so (laughs) into this. And I don't remember. I had a friend that was like, you got to watch it. And I just couldn't stop watching. Like for anyone, I think most people are pretty aware of this show by now. But if you haven't seen it yet, basically the concept is that it takes a bunch of singles. It it took place in Atlanta, Georgia. And -hmm. they were all in what they call pods where they basically couldn't see the people that they were dating. And it was all through um, phone calls, which is kind of ironic because (laughs) now we're all in our own pods at our homes in quarantine at the moment. So there's been like memes out there that Netflix was basically like predicting the future of dating with coronavirus. Well, the crazy thing about that show is these are strangers and they're living in a house and they're talking to people of the opposite sex through these pods without ever seeing them. But then a bunch of them end up getting engaged by the end and falling in love. So they're trying to prove this point that love is blind and, and that you fall in love with the person, the personality, and not so much the physicality. So because of the show and talk about funny timing, right? Yeah. This all happened before COVID-19 hit. And so we thought of this idea of repurposing this show for our own experiment, where we would set up one guy with three girls, where he would get to talk to all three of them every night for 30 minutes, each person for three nights in a row. And we did not make him propose. (laughs) That was a a big caveat. I think we had a couple different roles in the show and for a couple reasons. One, basically at the end of the three calls, he just had to ask one on a date. Like we weren't going to make him propose marriage. The other big difference was we did not reveal names and race in any capacity. I don't think they actually revealed race on Love is Blind, but a few people commented because of people's names, Mm -hmm. like what their race was. So it gave away some of that. And then age was also another piece that we did not want to put that into the equation either, because in Love is Blind, people probably remember Jessica and Mark, that couple, and she was really hung up on the fact that he was like 24 or something. Mm -hmm. So we did not want to put age into the mix and we did not want to put race into the mix at all. Yeah, and we chose someone who was so gung-ho about this. He was like, (laughs) yes, I'm down. I want to change my name. I'm not going to tell them my age or anything about me. And I'm down to meet three women that I've never met before all over the phone. And his name is Ryan. And he was such a good sport. He did this entire experiment for us. And we're still at a cliffhanger moment because he's chosen the woman that he wants to (laughs) go on a date with. But right now for this episode, we'll reveal the impressions of each other that the women had of him and he had of the women. Yeah, before we get into just kind of that reveal, like, I think it's funny to call out just like the amount of people that wanted to participate in this was crazy. Like we put up on Instagram just asking for people that were interested and the amount of emails we got was like off the chain. So we're definitely going to be doing more of these in the future for sure. Yeah. So for anyone interested, you can just reach out to us. We already have a whole list going, but it doesn't mean that you won't get on the list. We'll just keep this as like a rolling experiment. Yeah. And one other plug, if you want to stay connected and potentially get on other experiments is we have this really awesome Facebook group that we just started. It's called Love in the Time of Corona. We told you about it last week. We got a bunch of people 
requesting to join, which was great. But I don't know about you, UA, but I've just been so excited about just the activity in the group and like people really giving each other like a sense of community during this time, like posts about dating apps not being as active as they've heard. And people just like really replied back with some like interesting insights and just also like giving people ideas of like things to do to like stay sane during this time. Yeah, I just love the positivity of the group. It's not so much about a place to come and bitch about what's happening right now. It's more just coming together and sharing ideas. I mean, we had one member who commented that she's tie dyeing her shirts this weekend. I'm (laughs) like, that's a fantastic idea. (laughs) So it's, it's lovely. It's just like, it's definitely just restarted my creative juices as well. Totally. And I love too that people are like inviting each other to like virtual happy hours and event. <laughs> like one guy is like, let's do this like truth or drink event. Like if I buy the game, like are people down? And like so many people were all about it. And by the way, I had no idea that was a game. I thought he was just going to start a game <laughs> called truth or drink. I like that is brilliant. I am so totally down. <laughs> so out of it. So people need to get on the Facebook group. If you're not there yet, it is freaking awesome. And I'm so excited. It's keeping me sane during this time for sure. And speaking of keeping sane, before we get to this episode, I do want to say a huge thanks to our sponsor Empower, who is also helping others save up and get through this financial crisis time. Empower is an app where you can use autosave. So basically, you just establish a weekly savings target and Empower will study your income and spending and automatically know when to move the right amount of money into your savings account so that you don't have to think about money being taken away from you. It's more like your money's just growing in your savings account. It's like magic. Yeah, we talked about it last week too. I think right now we're, a lot of us aren't spending a lot of money. I mean, we're spending it on food, but we're not spending it on the everyday. So especially with like the looming economic recession, like it is a great time to start taking that money and putting it into savings. So where can people find Empower? So they can go to the app store or the Play Store and just download the app. It's spelled E-M-P-O-W-E-R. Over 650,000 other people, probably more by now, have downloaded it. And for our listeners only, you get $5 deposited into your account when you use the offer code DATABLE. Just go to empower.me slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E for more details. Awesome. Shall we meet Ryan? Let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of deets on who Ryan is. Ryan is an African-American male in his early 40s, originally from Texas, and has been in the Bay Area for two years. We're only giving physical traits in this episode for the purposes of this social experiment. Let's hear it from Ryan. Ryan, what's up? Hey, how you living? (laughs) <laughs> we are just dying to know everything. You've now had three calls with three different girls in three days. Yes? Yeah, that's right. Let's go down the line. First impressions after the first call. Let's start with Rachel. First impression. First impression. So I kind of thought of like one word to summarize each girl. Okay. And it really didn't change from day to one to day three. Mm. And with Rachel, I thought she was exciting. Oh, why is that? Um, <laughs> we actually talked about this. She has a little abrasive way about her. It's kind of <laughs> combative and we would kind of go back and forth a lot. Is that a know? good thing? I think it is high beta, right? It could be a great <laughs> thing or it could be a really bad thing. Um, it just kind of depends how things kind of play out there. But I think we had a really great time talking to, to each other. So to you, that was a good thing. Um, well, it served for a really good experience in this experiment. So what was exciting about her specifically? Uh, so she's someone who will kind of make something a little dramatic for effect and kind of take you down a road of conversation. Mm. It could be taken the wrong way, though, right? It's kind of like, I'm going to throw this out there and see what happens. What's an um, example? Um Take you out my notes here. Yes, do you have a notepad? Yes, Rachel, I took notes. <laughs> she actually accused me of taking notes at some point. You know? What a good student. You got to keep track. <sighs> yeah, you know, everything was kind of back to back to back too. You know, you want to keep everything together. So at a certain point, she accused me, uh, it's probably a little bit of an overstatement on my part, of being very calculated and kind of putting oh. up a front, uh, which I thought was really interesting feedback. But um, I could see how someone else might take that the wrong way. And so it kind of worked for me because like I'm open 
into receiving that, you know? So that was exciting to you though. Well, I just found the back and forth exciting. Um, There's always like another little mini controversy and it's kind of, you know, I play that game a little bit too, not quite as actively as she does these days, but I used to be really, you know, I used to be like that a lot when I was younger. So did you tell her your impressions of her? Yeah, no, I shared that. I, I and did. how did she take it? She was taken aback a little bit, but I think she was open to receiving it. And she said that a lot of her friends tell her that. Maybe you, UA. <laughs> <laughs> what about do you think she looks like if you were to have to describe her? <sighs> Rachel. Well, I mean, like, so there's a few data points that I was able to pick up. Data points, <laughs> great. That kind of informs, you know, what I what I might think about them. And uh, for example, I know Rachel is UA's friend. is very close to UA's boyfriend. And given the fact that she overemphasized her European travel and didn't mention any Asian travel, I have to think she's Asian. And then like, I think the last thing is, is she described her social way of being um, as one where she's kind of like, she doesn't really follow the rules. Mm. And the way she described it, I've just kind of pattern matched that um, with certain, I guess, groups. And so, yeah, I, my best guess is that she's an Asian girl. Wait, so you said that you think she's Asian because she has traveled mostly to European countries? No, she emphasized that in our conversation. So what made you think that that made her potentially Asian? Um, it's just the way it came off. You know, it, was, it seemed a little forced, like she didn't want to like, she wanted to steer me in a certain direction. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And um, how old do you think she is? My best guess is early 30s. Um, you know, I would say 28 to 33 range. So let's say 31. Okay. So Rachel, early 30s, Asian woman. Mm-hmm. Okay. Throughout the calls, I know you mentioned that some of them, your impressions relatively stayed the same. Was there any differences or did it just build on at each call, the impression that you had? Yeah, I mean, I think things evolved a little bit. I can see um, Rachel and I into more of a comfort zone as our mutual abrasiveness kind of subsided to understanding. Mutual (laughs) abrasiveness. (laughs) I mean, I seriously, I mean that in the best way possible. And I think uh, it's, you know, it's kind of one of those things where I'm joking you, now you're joking me, you know. It's, so it's not like uh, I'm mad at you, you're mad at me. Mm. Very different things. This is a matter of like nuance here. And sometimes maybe my language isn't good enough to bring out that nuance. Well, I remember when we first talked about what you were looking for, it was important for you to have someone that you could communicate with and have differing opinions and have that mm-hmm. like kind of not fighting, but arguments that you understand each other, I guess. Mm-hmm. Did mm-hmm. you feel like that with her? Or did you feel like it was more butting heads? No, I, I definitely got that. You know, I, we didn't, I don't feel like we butted heads at all. I felt like we really had a good time, like breaking things open and saying, well, what about this? Mm. Oh, and then let me explain. Mm-hmm. And then what about that? You know, so it was, it was a good back and forth. It was fun. Hmm. Interesting. (laughs) Ryan's impressions of Rachel. So he basically thought she was exciting and combative in a good way. I don't think I've heard that before, combative in a good way, but... I've never heard of those two (laughs) used together to describe one person, but who is Rachel? Well, Rachel is a Caucasian woman, 38 years old. She's been in the Bay Area for 27 years and is originally from Salt Lake City. She's single and taking somewhat of a dating sabbatical. Except for this experiment, of course. (laughs) Here's what Rachel thought of Ryan. I believe we have Rachel on the line. Hey, Rachel. Hi. Well, well. Hi, hi, hi. Not wait. You got a dish, girl. (laughs) What were some of your first impressions of Ryan from that first call? Um, uh, he was very polite. I was prepared for like the prompts. As you guys said, he was have prompts. I didn't hear any prompts. So I felt like I was in charge and like I had to get this conversation going. Mm. He had already had two other calls. I was like, oh, I better like bring the energy, ask all the questions, do all the things. And then at one point I was like, I have to stop talking. (laughs) (laughs) I like stop. Let there be awkward silence. There needs to be awkward silence and let him talk, you know? So how did this progress? then throughout the rest of the calls? Was it the same or did it change? Uh, No, I think changing the times was super helpful, which also I had that idea after getting off the phone as well. So I was glad that the times got to be switched. The end of the second call got like a little more interesting. The second call, I would say was the best call. Uh, in my perception. At the end of the second call, said something about me, which I thought was like super interesting. And I was like, oh, like we need to like get back to that. 
What did he say? Uh, he said, oh, like you must be some kind of like baby CEO or like baby executive or like on your, he's like, I don't know how old you are, but you must be like on your way to being some kind of executive. And I was like, what? Like, whoa, so interesting. And I was like, what makes you think that? He's like, oh, I don't know. Just the way that you like go about things and the way that you speak, you're like, <laughs> I think he used the word combative. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I've been combative. That's interesting. He's like, no, that's not the right word. And then on the on the third call, I was like, let's get to that. Because- <laughs> Wait, so you're like, I'm not combative, but let's talk about why I'm combative. <laughs> Well, I thought it was so interesting. And I think I know what he was getting at. I think what the whole thing made me so curious about is because I have dated men, guys, I have no range of what other women date like. Mm. Mm. So I only know how I act, right? And I only know like the women that I surround myself with. And um, like in the third call, he was like, no, like you're not afraid to challenge people and you're not afraid to be challenged. And I was like, yeah, like what are other people? people <laughs> wait so all of this did you find this conversation offensive or were you okay with it like what was the end outcome of it no like I'm not good at small like I can do small talk but because um because of my job and because I feel like I have to do it so frequently like I'm not that interested in small talk mm. like I want to like get to it like yes mm-hmm. like <laughs> let's talk about your impressions of me let's talk about my, my impressions of you like like let's talk about your trauma like what's going on in your life you know like I'm not interested in like oh where are we at travel then like, <laughs> like <laughs> I mean it's like interesting to a point right but right. that's like not who you are as a person. So did you guys get deep? Like, was it a good conversation? I still, I guess I'm still trying to understand. Was it a good <laughs> conversation good or was conversations it a bad conversation? Or- <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they were interesting is the way that I would describe it because you don't have that physical connection if there is one. And because you're kind of on this phone call where it's kind of like a little bit like I do a monologue, then you do a monologue. And then <laughs> I say a thing and you say a thing. You know, there's it's it's a little bit harder to have those like kind of fun or funny or like mm. joking conversations where you might talk over one each other or you know what I mean? So I would just say that it was interesting. So do you think that's a matter of the phone or just your chemistry, though? Right. I think it's definitely a mix of both. So he said that impression to me. And then I said, he's like, oh, well, now that I said something like you go. And I was like, okay, great. Love it. Um, (laughs) Brace yourself. So I was like, you just seem like a little, not like formal. I said, you're very aware of how you're presenting yourself. Mm. You like break through like a little bit in these moments. You're not doing a presentation at work. You know what Uh, I mean? So guard is up a little. Yes, yes, yes. That's that's mm. the way that it came across, which could be true or untrue. You know, like I, I have no idea and I'm not judging anybody for how they present themselves. Like, you know. So did the guard come down by the third conversation? Uh, I'm going to say no. There were times during each conversation where he would like break through. Like he told me this one story about his brother. Like that was like very entertaining. I was like, where's where's more of like that person? So now you have three conversations with him. What do you think he looks like? <sighs> I mean, this is hard. (laughs) To be honest, I really didn't fully think about it. He said that he does some boxing. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, I don't think he's like super like ripped muscle guy. And I don't think he's like lanky guinea guy. I think he's probably like fairly athletic looking. I would say average-ish height. I don't know. How old do you think he is? Oh, interesting. Mid to late 30s, I'm going to guess. He talked about having a family soon-ish, guessing that, and his tone of voice, I would say maybe 30s, somewhere in that range. What about ethnicity? Do you have any thoughts there? I'm going to guess that he's not fully white. I would say he's like a mix of something or not white. (laughs) <laughs> are my two guesses. <laughs> what made you think that? I don't know. Maybe his tone of voice. Some of the mm-hmm. things he said, he talked about the Air Force. He talked about kind of the East Coast and the South. I don't know. I guess the just the places he lived in mm. and maybe the atmosphere in which he grew up from what I could gather. I don't know. It's really hard to say. So did you guys have like any points of connection that you felt like this is someone I want to meet? Uh, he did do the boxing thing and I like doing Muay Thai. So that was, and he also did mention that he did Muay Thai. So I thought that was fun. Uh, he likes to travel. It seems like he likes traveling a lot. I also like traveling. Um, he likes California. Yeah. I mean, uh, I feel like <laughs> <laughs> those, 
<laughs> you don't sound very convinced. Yeah, those are like, that's like the laundry list of like things that you're checking off. Yeah, you basically just named someone's Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm telling you guys, like I just want to caveat all of this with like, of course, this is my own perception of it. I could be totally wrong. All of these things could be like off base. I felt like I was attempting at some level of like, let's get into it. And again, I felt like it was very, again, presentational. He could probably get there at some point, right? Because I saw it break through, but I'm over here just like, oh. Yeah. That's really good feedback for him. With that said, would you want to meet him in person? <sighs> I think I would only be curious about what he looked like just for the <laughs> mystery yeah. of it. But like in terms of a match, I would say that we are probably not a match, which doesn't say anything about him. It doesn't say anything about me. I just think the two of us together are probably not necessarily compatible. Fair enough. Any last words, <laughs> Rachel? It was all super interesting, number one. And like halfway through, like when he did make that comment about me, I was like, oh, right. There's somebody perceiving me, mm. right? Mm. Again super interesting being able to get that feedback from a person is like very rare like that's why I love what you guys do like sometimes on the podcast when you do date reviews mm -hmm. like I am gonna be so curious like again all about me right <laughs> <laughs> but to see how I came across is gonna be super interesting like I'm very curious yeah that's a great part of this whole experiment is that you kind of get that feedback that no one will ever give you so <laughs> yeah and that should be like a thing though there should be like at the end of a date, like some way to give honest feedback to the person or like a, an anonymous like online survey or something <laughs> like not going to to black mirror, like ratings, but it's so interesting because then you can compare that as to the way that either you think you're coming across or the way that you want to come across. And this experiment takes looks completely out of that equation too, which mm -hmm. makes it even more fascinating. I'm very curious to see what happens. Yeah. It may not be the end yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you eh? Always leaving that door open. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again, Rachel. It was so great to talk to you and catch up about what's been going on the last couple of days. Thanks, ladies. Thanks, Rachel. Bye. Bye. Wow, she also described him as combative. Julie, is this a match made in heaven or what? <laughs> I can't <laughs> decide if it's people. a match or if it's a terrible <laughs> explosion waiting to happen. Do you get the sense that she's kind of like, huh, I'm in this for a social experiment, but he's like, I see her as a challenge. <laughs> you know what? I think at this point, anything is possible. So it's going to be interesting to see what he says about the other girls and what they say about him. And that's why the next woman we want to introduce you to is Lacey. Here are Ryan's impressions of her. What about Lacey, the next one? Lacey. The word I have when I think about Lacey is fun. Mm. Pure fun. We really had a great time. We came up with a little um, nickname for her, Lacey Strange, as if, as if <laughs> she's the sister of Dr. Strange. Because <laughs> right? Dr. Strange has a little, that little time capsule. He can make time speed up. Right. So she was like talking to her, make time speed up. Oh, a really good time. Oh, OK. Because uh, I wouldn't want to be called UA strange. But OK, now <laughs> now that you explained it, <laughs> it's endearing you. the way you explained it. Maybe yeah, not yeah. without that. <laughs> so you guys, you felt like the conversation felt more effortless and like went by fast with her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would be talking to, about one thing, then another. We had a lot of really fun stuff in common. For example, like, um, you know, we love some of the same sports. Uh, we've had, you know, similar experiences or ways of thinking about social time, you know, nightlife or being outdoors or what have you. Your impressions of her changed by the third conversation. I don't think they really changed. I think that the third conversation, so she's the only person that was first, second and third conversation. And I think that the third conversation was extra late that night mm. because she had to cancel and I was tired and I think, and she was out shopping and it kind of ended flat. You know, so I don't mm -hmm. know if it changed as much as it was just like our third conversation just didn't end as well as or with the same energy the first two had. You know, I can see how Lacey is a little bit more when she's distracted. Mm. What do you think she looks like if you were to have to describe her? Lacey, um, my best guess is she's younger. Okay. You know, she's a Marina girl. That? She's a Marina girl. That's not a Marina girl. <laughs> that's, uh, according to her own words, that slipped out. She's can, rather tall. Can you describe for anyone that's not an SF listener what a Marina girl that's not a Marina girl <laughs> well, means? Because I think anyone in SF would understand, but we got a lot of listeners outside of San Francisco. Right. 
Well, I think uh, the marina scene is one that's young and fun. I can't say that I really experienced it. You know, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little older. When I'm up there and from the discourse that I hear about the marina, it's young and fun. And, and so, it's kind of like fratty for anybody yeah, who's fratty. who doesn't know what a marina bro or a marina girl is. It's kind of like frat row. But I'm curious yeah. if she's a marina girl that's not a marina girl. What's the yeah, not what a marina girl part? Um, that's, that's her own self uh, description. Those sort of designations don't mean a lot to me. Got it. I don't think like, oh my gosh, someone's from marina, so it means this. I just think like I'm going to sit down with a person, I'll get to know them, uh, have a we relate, and that'll be what it is. What makes you think she's tall? Because she said so. And then what do you think her ethnicity is? Um, best guess, you know, I'd probably say uh, Caucasian. Yeah. Caucasian girl is 26. 26. Okay. That's very specific. She, well, she asked me how I came to 26. And I just said, well, it sounds like you didn't just get out of college, but you don't sound like you're 30 yet. Oh, you guys weren't supposed to talk about age. <laughs> No, 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 no. We didn't talk about age. We they talked about deal. impressions. We talk, yes, we talked about impressions. Okay, okay, fair enough. And, so why know. do you think she doesn't sound like she's 30 yet? She's living a really active lifestyle. Mm. She sounds like she could be totally knocked off her feet, right, and be in a relationship. Mm. But I didn't get the feeling, we actually talked about this. She, I don't think that's her preference. So mm. I think she wants to be out there and having fun. And I think that at a certain point for most women, most people really, there's, you know, men or women, there gets to be a certain time when they're like, mm, I'm a little, I'm, I really want something more. And I don't think she's at that place. Mm, interesting. Because I think when she, we talked to her, she said she was open to a relationship, but also I could also feel that funness coming through. So I see what you're saying. Do you feel like her age and the, her energy felt compatible for you and where you are at this stage of life? You know, so I was talking to a buddy of mine um, about a year ago. He said something really on point. He said, you know, I, what women don't get is that all men are always ready for Mrs. Wright. But in the meantime, what women don't understand is that Mrs. Wright always starts as Miss Wright now. Mm. And so I think it's just a matter of, um, for me, like, you know, if it's, the, if it's my person, then it'll be my person. Got and it. typically that's going to start off with something, you know, really fun and exciting and if the person does have it all together, it'll bloom and blossom into that special thing, right? Okay. So Lacey Strange. <laughs> That's endearing. It's endearing only there's if there's context next to it. If it's just standalone, you're like, what? I don't... It's, is that endearing? <laughs> he definitely felt that way. So it'll be interesting to hear her perception of it. Yeah, well, he thinks she's really fun. So let's see if she thought he was equally as fun. But who is Lacey? She's a Caucasian woman who's 27 years old, currently living in the marina here in San Francisco, originally from Florida. She's single and actively going on dates, as well as hooking up and having fun. This is Lacey. So, Lacey, tell us, what were some of your first impressions of Ryan after that first phone call? You know, it's so hard to tell after talking to somebody just for like 30 minutes and it's such a unique situation. But he seemed very friendly, very down to earth, uh, very just good at communicating, right? He was easy to talk to, which is really huge. But uh, yeah, so it was a good first impression for sure. Awesome. And then how did things like progress throughout the three times that you talked? Um, I think it just got a little more comfortable. We a little more like lighthearted and we're joking with each other and just having a good time. So, you know, just a little more of a friendship built over the course of the calls. And how would you describe Ryan if you had to use a couple words? Uh, friendly. I would say he, he seemed intelligent and I would say you know, open minded. What do you think he looks like? That's so hard. <laughs> that <question. laughs> For some reason, I feel like he's tall, which I have no idea why, but <laughs> probably somewhat athletic. So we did talk about like active things that we did in sports and whatnot. And for some reason, I picture him having like light brown hair. And once again, I have no idea why. <laughs> <laughs> what ethnicity do you think he is? Either white or possibly half Asian. Oh, half There's Asian. Like a couple of comments that he made. Yeah, I don't know why. What were the comments? But, uh, Do you remember? I think he said something about like being German and Japanese and then kind of backtracked as if he would, like, shouldn't have said that or he was saying that to throw me off. So <laughs> I'm not sure which one it was. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. And how old do you think he is? Um, I would say like upper 20s, maybe 30. Why is that? You know, trying to verbalize like why I think all these things is so weird because I've never <laughs> had to do that before. So. <laughs> uh, why do I think? I think just a... Uh, 
we seem to be on the same wavelength as far as like the amount of time that we've been like dating and where we are and you know what we're looking for so it seemed like we we're around the same age range interesting was there anything about any of your conversations that really stood out to you good or bad it could be either <laughs> so there was nothing like bad like literally bad that stood out by any means um I, I think one thing that was good was just that like we seemed to feel so comfortable by the last conversation like i was literally talking to him while, while walking through a grocery store in tahoe with my friends getting stuff for the weekend so (laughs) (laughs) and how do you think he compares to people you normally date just from the conversations uh definitely a little different than my normal type but that being said my type hasn't like worked out for me so far so what's your normal type (laughs) my normal type I typically date like athletes or personal trainers typically african-american and he doesn't sound like that type no what was it that made him not sound like that type just like his his hobbies and the way he likes to spend his time and what he likes to do and you know he that he likes to like code in his spare time and like it, it just I just didn't get those vibes but once again I could be wrong did you think there was chemistry between the two of you through these phone calls did you think there was chemistry between the two of you through these phone calls it's hard to say if there was chemistry because in my opinion that's that's something that you find when you're with that person like physically mm-hmm. there's some sort of a a connection or a compatibility in the sense that you know we could hold a conversation pretty easily and um and get along. And would you want to meet him in real life? I'd be open to it. Yeah. Open to it because you see him as someone that you could date or open because it's an experiment. And you're just curious. (laughs) I mean, so it's funny, because I was talking about this with my friends, even before this podcast came up about successful relationships. So you know, there are those people that you meet that you kind of like, like the love at first sight, or you instantly, you know, fall in love with them or whatever, right? But those don't end up working out in my experience Hmm. the ones that do end up working out are the ones that kind of build over time as like friendships right and then the relationship evolves and grows in that way my point of sharing that is I don't have like that feeling of like oh my god goo goo gaga over Ryan but I do feel that I could enjoy spending time with him and getting to know him more which meeting him in person would be the next step to that how do you think he would describe you after these three calls. (laughs) God. (laughs) (laughs) I hate evaluating myself and I feel like I have to do that in this question. So I'll see how how I'm able to get through this. (laughs) Probably lighthearted um, and goofy. I'm joking with everybody all the time. So I think that came across in our our conversations. Someone who's like active and likes to do things. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. (laughs) <laughs> was there a nickname assigned to you? Yeah. <laughs> They're calling me Lacey Strange because our calls, like, I'd be, we'd be like, oh, time's up. And he's like, wow, how do you make time go so fast? He's like, are you like Dr. Strange from the Avengers? Because you like warp time or something. So it somehow turned into him calling me Lacey Strange. How did you I- feel about the nickname? <laughs> that was funny. Like, okay. I, I thought it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it sounds like you, you guys had some sort of connection and it was easy to talk to each other I don't get a sense of too much excitement in your voice no I'm definitely excited I think because he kind of asked me this question too and he's like you know like how important is this to you or whatever but my thing is like you can't take anything too seriously nowadays but I don't want to get like too invested in something that's just Mm. so like open-ended and you know so many unknowns Mm. that I'm definitely open-minded and willing to like explore it more but it's not something that, you know, I'm going to invest a lot of emotion into early on. Got it. So you wouldn't be devastated if it didn't work out, but you're open to seeing where it goes. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, and I do, I do like Ryan, you know, what I've gotten to know so far. Right. But I, once again, you know, I'm not going to like be devastated. If- <laughs> <laughs> right. So on a scale of one to 10, how excited are you to meet him? Uh, I would say, I would say like a 10. Like I would be excited oh. to meet him. Yeah. If I got the opportunity, I'd be excited. Sure. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, Lacey. And we're super excited to see what happens with all this. Yeah, no, I'm excited too. And thank you guys for uh, the definitely unique opportunity. <laughs> unique <fun>. indeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lacey Strange, we'll chat soon. <laughs> all right, thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> okay, okay. So Lacey thought the conversation went pretty smoothly. She felt like it was pretty comfortable. Also words I would describe my duvet cover. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think on the surface, it sounded like she enjoyed the time. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if she really did or she's just trying to like kind of protect her feelings a little. I can't right. re- fully read it. But don't forget, we still have a third woman. Her name is Taylor. And here are Ryan's impressions of her. And then we have Taylor. First impression. I would say that she has it all together. Okay. You know? um, she is someone who is philosophically sound who has had a lot of really interesting experiences and has really processed them and like added that all to herself. Do you, is that a type that you're attracted to? I think that's attractive to just about everybody. Um, I don't know anyone who wouldn't appreciate that in a a significant other. So what was it about your conversation with her that made you have this impression? You know, we got into some really like philosophical conversations. Let me look at my notes real quick here. (laughs) Um, We talked about some of our psychedelic experiences, Mm. which are kind of things that can bring people together. I'm having that shared experience because it's not that common. We talked a lot about things like our exes and some of the experiences there. Oh, really? Some really long relationships. So you guys went a little deeper. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps, you know, I think, um, you know, we both have uh, had relationships where we dated someone who was super jealous and how that kind of informed our experience. I mean, like we were talking about kind of the stuff that that you think about when you reflect on your life. Mm. And Taylor, what do you think she looks like? Taylor, uh, Taylor Swift. You know? uh, <laughs> Did she give uh, you her whole name? <laughs> no, but, I, you know, she uh, chose Taylor after Taylor Swift. And given her fascination with with Taylor Swift and um, who was the other blonde bombshell singer? Britney Spears? Britney. Yes. Given her fascination (laughs) with like Taylor Swift and Britney Spears, I'd have to think she's a a Caucasian or white girl. Okay. Um, Best guess, I'm thinking she's probably 36. Okay. Okay. Why is that? um, Just her relationship history. It's vast enough to be that old. She could be older, she could be younger, but that's my best guess. I'd say give or take three years on the other side. And what do you think she looks like? Hair color? Uh, I have no idea about that, but I do get the feeling that she's very attractive. Oh, why is that? Uh, Just some of the stories she told me about exes and things like that, you know? Um, Yeah, yeah. I get the feeling she's probably a very attractive girl. Wow. Talk about deep conversations. Such a different impression than the other women. I know, for sure. It's so fascinating how much these three have varied. So, so different. It seems like they took their conversation to a whole new level, which I'm not sure how he was able to do in three days with like 30 (laughs) minutes each time. But Taylor must have gotten something out of him. Or Taylor's just someone who has deep conversations with people. That's true. Like sometimes it could just be your personality. Yeah. So we got to meet Taylor. She's a 36-year-old Asian woman, originally from San Jose. She's lived in San Francisco for nine years. She is currently looking for marriage and kids in her future. And she just got out of a relationship about two months ago and so ready to date. Here's Taylor's impressions of Ryan. Taylor Swift. It's such an honor to have you on the phone. I can't believe you have time to date. (laughs) And you were willing to do this blind date experiment. That's so nice of you. (laughs) You know, I just thought it'd be a really interesting ethnographic experience. And, you know, if he doesn't know I'm a celebrity, that's okay. You kind of sound like her. No way. Is that like the best compliment you've gotten all day? Well, I'm I'm like, which song should I sing? (laughs) (laughs) Shake it off, obviously. I don't know, Bad Blood. Oh, you're like, Mm. you guys like the old Taylor. I had like two more albums afterwards. (laughs) (laughs) So Taylor, you spoke with Ryan three different nights for 30 minutes each time, just about. What were some of your first impressions of him after that first call? So it's this whole experience is really interesting because it's so it's like the pendulum has swung from looking at an app where you see exactly what they look like, you know, their credentials, their age, and you can you create your own narrative of what this person's like. So I had to be really open because I didn't know what he looked like or any of his history and listen to him, listen to his tone and see if I could get along with him. And um, 
it was a really nice experience because he was just so, he sounded so warm and open and a really kind person. Oh, did your impression change throughout the three phone calls? You know, I, when I started to get more information about him, you know, so then I learned he is from a military family and he was in the Air Force. I started saying like, oh, maybe he's someone who's more disciplined, you know, because that's kind of my experience with people from the military. And I know that they're really good with boundaries and discipline. So, you know, just like a little bit more information added to his whole picture for me. Is he a, a, a typical guy that you would date normally or is he kind of different? Probably not because I've never dated anyone from Texas or the, was in the military. What other qualities about him did you really either like or didn't like so much? We talk so much about spirituality and spirituality is my jam. So I loved that he did the Wim Hof meditation method for a year straight, which is also speaks to, I think was like, oh, he's a really disciplined guy to do that kind of meditation for a year. So I think we connected on that level. Anything else did you connect on? I think it was mainly that and also that he was he was a pretty open person. Like I felt like he was an open book and that's sort of the same with me. You can mm. ask me a question and I'll answer it. I felt like that was true of him. What are some words you use to describe him? Spiritual and thoughtful. Sounds like he reads a bit and he um, takes things into consideration. I don't think he takes things at face value. And he's funny. He's like a, he sounds like a fun, funny guy. And I could see why he chose him to be on the podcast. Oh, what other like conversations did you guys have when you were talking? We talked about past relationships a little bit, Mm. how we overcame some of the difficulties of breakup, you know, the lessons we've learned and how we can bring that forward to find the uh, best person for us in the future. And by having those conversations, did that make you feel closer to him or did you not like having those conversations? Totally. I, I think those are conversations you don't usually have on a first date, but to me, this is all just information to get to know another person. So I, I love being able to talk about that. And it seemed like he was open and he likes learning about that too. So what do you think are his impressions of you? How would he describe you? Probably like a hippie Northern California girl. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Because when you're over the phone and they can't see you, and the conversation is being driven in, you know, towards one direction. And then there's just a lot of questions, especially when it comes to such an open question about spirituality, which can go into so many different realms and little nooks and crannies. Or I think he, at one point he was like, yeah, I can tell you're from California. So I think that definitely showed. <laughs> Taylor, what do you think he looks like? You know, I think he is black and I think he is clean cut. I think that because I know he was in the Air Force. Those are my guesses. And maybe he's like 5'10". Why do you think that he's African-American? I actually wasn't sure if I heard this correctly, but I think at one point, and maybe I'll be able to ask him. I think on the first phone date, he has said, que rico, which is like how rich, which is like a Latin word. So I was like, oh, maybe he's, maybe he's Latin. But then I was like, I'm not sure if he said that or if I just, (laughs) you just heard it. (laughs) It's just like not a common phrase that people say, but I thought he said that he talked about being Catholic and I know a lot a lot of Latin folks are Catholic. So I thought he was maybe Latin, but then when he talked about the military and his family, then I was like, oh, maybe he's black. And then being in Texas, I I don't know. I I wasn't sure. So I don't know for sure, but then I went from Latin to maybe black African-American. And how old do you think he is? I feel like everyone is younger than me. So I'm 36, but I felt like maybe he was in his early 30s. What made you think that? He has, he's just like young and vibrant and he's not old and jaded yet. So felt like a younger spirit. So I guess, would you want to meet him in person? Yeah, totally. I mean, I love this experiment because it helps me get to know myself better as well. And I just want to know if all assumptions that you make, like if if they turned out correct. Would you want to meet him to like, because you see him as someone you could date though, or is it more just for the experiment? So it's both. It's sort of like how I think Bachelor contestants go into The Bachelor these days, which is like, yes, they're looking for love and a real connection, but then also they are maybe have, I think for the bachelor contestants, they have some like agency over maybe their career. And for me, it was definitely two parts. It was like, yes, I'm looking a hundred percent looking for someone to have a real connection with. And I'm looking for the whole nine yards, but I also am interested to see like how open I can be in an experiment like this and see how I react. He seems like a great guy from the three phone calls. And I would um, totally love to meet him in person. 
So on a scale of one to 10, 10 being extremely excited, how excited are you to meet him in person? It would be probably a seven. Okay. That's pretty good. Why do you think not a 10? Maybe at this juncture in my life right now, I don't have a 10 for anybody. Maybe it was for Taylor Swift. (laughs) (laughs) 10 is reserved only for Taylor. We get it. (laughs) Seven is pretty good, especially in light of everything that's going on right now. um, Wanting to meet someone in person, I think seven's good. I'll take that. Well, thanks, Taylor. Taking your time out out of your really busy tour schedule. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> to do this experiment for Datable. It's really honorable of you. I'm so glad you can see my light. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We'll chat soon, Taylor. Wow. Okay. Sounds like Taylor definitely felt like things went pretty deep too. So I'm going to guess there was an absolute connection between these two, but let's hear from Ryan one last time for some of his closing thoughts. We're going to wait to hear who you'd pick, but is there anyone that you wouldn't pick? Um, gosh, you know, I, I've had to sleep on this a lot. So it's funny, you know, I'm, I'm becoming really focused now. I have been discerning in that, you know, I usually allow the girl to pick more by behaving a certain way and just realizing that the people who are my people will be, will resonate with me, right? And letting that kind of work itself out. Um, instead of being more deliberate in my actual initiation. As much as I liked all of them, I don't know that I would want to go down that path. They feel like really good friends of mine. I don't know if I'd want to like stir those that pot. I feel like I know them all very well in different ways. Yeah? So you said when we talked just briefly that you've had deeper conversations with these people than you have with online dates? Yes. Can you cut it? Just go in a little more about how this is different than your just typical dating app experiences? Well, you know, I think uh, so much about these things is about how people show up. As as I've gotten more mature, I've tried to become very consistent with how I show up, you know, and always try to make sure I put my best foot forward, um, independent uh, of whether I meet them in real time or online or introduced by a friend or on a um, podcast experiment. And... Um, <laughs> You know, Two of the contestants are friends of yours, and I think that they were putting their best foot forward. I think the third, you know, just put her best foot forward just because. And perhaps it's those sorts of things informing it because it's an experiment. But I thought they all showed up a certain way. And I get the feeling that, you know, people get so frustrated by so many bad experiences online that when they actually have somebody who's ready to meet them, oftentimes they don't show up, right? Mm-hmm. Or they don't show up well. You know, um, and so obviously that impacts that impacts all of us as we're going through online dating. You know, I think that this experiment, you know, was one in which it, it there was strong encouragement for everyone to show up well. And I think that we'd all have a lot better experience if we always just focused on, you know what, I have no control over the other person. I'm not going to let that, you know, mark me up or down or inform how I'm going to show up. I'm going to just do the best I can because that's all I can control. And that's all I can go back and look myself in the mirror and be happy or not happy about myself. You know what I mean? Um, And I think we'd all have a lot better experience if that was our focus. So if we were to, since this is a two way street, I love how you call them contestants. (laughs) They're not really competing. It's it's more just about gauging Mm -hmm. chemistry without seeing them in person yet. And who do you think like, Obviously, we don't know your decision yet, but of the three women, who do you think wants to meet you the most? Ooh, mm. um, that's that would be really presumptuous of me to think that any of them even care. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> who would be most excited to meet you? Maybe Rachel. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think she would want to like, you know, give me a talking to in real life <laughs> over a drink or two <laughs> to see where it goes. <laughs> But that's, I, you know, that's just throwing a dart, really. I think that uh, Taylor, you know, we could sit and talk for hours about so many things under the sun. So uh, it's, it's hard to say. Lacey, I would like to say she'd like to meet me, but I think she might be too busy for me. It's hard for oh. me to say. Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah, but it's just cool. like, All right. like, I said, like I said, I'm really throwing darts. I have no idea. All very interesting. Well, thank you so much, Ryan, for participating in this. And we're excited to hear who you pick and see if there's a date. Okay. Thank you. Talk to you soon. All right. The 
this was fascinating. <laughs> like, I don't even know what else to say. Like, it's so crazy how impressions were formed so quickly off of really small things. I think that's like my biggest takeaway from this whole thing is like <laughs> some of like the assumptions that were made. I just, it's yeah. so interesting. It's always interesting to see the different perspectives and also like they knew they were going to be on a podcast, right? Mm-hmm. So I think they were listening to each other more intently yeah. so that they can give a better impression and talk about it on the show. That was something I definitely took away from all of them, though, is that it actually really forced them to continue a connection. And I think so often with dating apps is you meet once and you have a okay, mediocre experience, and then it's not worth pursuing. Where having this experiment made you keep pursuing it no matter what. And it'll mm-hmm. be interesting to see like how that actually impacts who ends up going on the date. I think what we can all learn from this experiment is what active listening feels yes. like. It's It felt like all of them were so present with each other and they learned so much about each other in a short amount of time. And sometimes in real life, when we go, I mean, this is in real life, but like <laughs> out there in the wild, when we go on dates, it could be three or four dates and you haven't learned anything about the other person because you didn't listen. You know what it is? I think like for me too, during coronavirus right now, I've been spending so much time talking on the phone. And I think I actually even prefer it to video because Mm. it really focuses you in on what someone's saying because there is no additional things to be looking at to be doing like it's really just using one sense right which is your hearing yes so with that said I think we should both reveal who you think (laughs) Ryan is gonna pick oh our (laughs) picks I love it I I think we should give our own picks I have a very strong opinion I really think it's gonna be Taylor just because (laughs) it felt like the way he described her was so different it felt like they had a connection it felt like he wanted to talk to her even more I really think that he's super curious about what she's like in real life in person so I I think he's gonna pick Taylor yeah you know what like I actually kind of think that too However, I'm also not 100% sure because I think there is something that he finds really like fun about Lacey. But he Mm. also, I don't know, I think um, Rachel could be a wild card too because (laughs) there's something that he finds intriguing about her for sure. Like she's like the mysterious one of this. I agree with you. It sounds like the best connection was definitely Taylor and Ryan. I'm wondering if his curiosity, because, you know, like sometimes when you learn so much about someone, you don't Mm. have as much curiosity of someone that you don't know as much about. So it'll be interesting to Mm. see how this actually plays out. Yeah. And also, I mean, I'm not going to change my mind on this, but (laughs) I do think I do see where you're coming from as well. I think it depends on what he's looking for in that first date. If he's looking for a deeper connection and conversation, then he would take pick Taylor. If he's looking for fun and flirty, I yeah. think he would pay, pick Lacey. And if he's looking for the ultimate challenge, <laughs> just a throw down, that's going to be Rachel. You know what? I mean, I actually secretly hope it's Rachel just because <laughs> Me too. I would love to be on that date and just see because I feel like her going in too, like she's would do I think she'd accept not necessarily because she felt a connection, but because she's so curious also. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, we're curious to see, uh, to hear what you all think. Who do you think Ryan will pick? Will it be Rachel, Lacey, or Taylor? Follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and uh, we'll take a poll. Let us know. Yeah, we're going to also do it in our Facebook group too. So make sure to join and love in the time of Corona also. Weigh in, weigh in. And of course, you got to tune in to next week's episode of Love is Blind Part 2, where Ryan will give his big reveal of who he picked to go on a date with and then what actually happened on that date. Oh my God, yes. (laughs) Okay, we're going to wrap this up. Stay Stay dateable. dateable. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcast. Want to continue the conversation? First, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at Dateable Podcast. Tag us in any post with the hashtag Stay Dateable and trust us, we look at all those posts. Then head over to our website, datablepodcast.com. 
There you'll find all the episodes as well as articles, videos, and our coaching service with vetted industry experts. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We're also downloadable for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher Radio, and other podcast platforms. Your feedback is valuable to us, so don't forget to leave us a review. And most importantly, remember to stay dateable. Thank you.